Hello boys and girls, today it's all about your GoPro and of course you because today I would like to show you how to control your GoPro, how to control the GoPro using your phone. It doesn't really matter if you have an iPhone or an Android phone. I give you an entire tutorial on how to change the frame rate, how to take a time-lapse video, how to take photos. So everything will be explained from the beginning on. If the GoPro Hero 7 is your first camera, it doesn't really matter if you have a GoPro Hero 5, Hero 6, Hero 7 or in the future a GoPro Hero 8. The controllability is almost the same using a GoPro since they have a touch display now. If you have any further questions, make sure to post a comment below. And now enjoy this video. If it was too fast for you, just jump back very quick and just watch it again. On the GoPro you have two physical buttons one on top which is good for starting a video stopping a video taking a photo taking a time lapse and there's the other button next to it you can either use it for scrolling in between some different modes for instance going from the photo to the video mode and to the time lapse feature or if you would like to turn on and off the camera if you would like to turn on the camera hold the button for two seconds if you would like to turn it off, hold it again for two seconds. Starting the GoPro Hero 7 for the first time, you can expect to see a display like that. Obviously, that's going to be the English tutorial about the GoPro Hero 7. That's why I choose English. You have to agree to the legal stuff. Yes. Here, the GoPro asks you if you would like to turn on and off the GPS. Yes, I would like to do that because once you were swimming, once you were in the jungle and you took some really nice footage later on in post on your computer, you will be able to see the location exactly, taking the data from the GPS module which is built inside the GoPro Hero 7. So for this purpose, I leave it on. Here it's asking you, would you like to do the setup with the GoPro Hero app? For the time being, I skip that. And now you can choose the date, as you can see, pretty, pretty simple. I just take a random one, choose OK. If you would like to set the date, either you stay in the 12 hours format or 24 hours format, up to you. For this purpose, I just leave it on 6.07 a.m. And that was the easy setup. As you can see, the display is quite bright for the moment. Swipe from the top to the bottom, go preferences, go to touch display, scroll down and adjust the brightness as needed. I think that's going to work out quite well for this review. The first feature that we're going to talk about is voice control. Here you can turn it on, see it says voice control, tap on it again choose the language you would like to control the GoPro with. It's English, yes, and I'm going to show you what's going to happen now. If you go to preferences, voice control, scroll down, here are the commands that you can use for voice control. I know them not by heart, but I have my laptop next to it and I'm going to show you what each of these control does. GoPro, take a photo. GoPro video mode. GoPro burst mode. GoPro take a video. GoPro take a video. As you can see, that command does not work, but if you tell the GoPro, GoPro start recording, see? it's going to record a video. So make sure if you use these controls, you use exactly the ones displayed under the voice control command section. GoPro, stop capture. GoPro, time-lapse mode. GoPro, photo mode. GoPro, take a photo. Easy, isn't it? If you would like to turn it off, tap on voice command off. If you don't want to listen to the beep control at all time, 
you can turn it on and off. Here is the quick capture feature. That means if your GoPro is off, I'm gonna switch it off for a second. If I tap on the upper button once, the GoPro should turn on and start taking a video immediately, as you can see. If I to hold that button once again, it's going to stop the video and the GoPro should turn off. And that's exactly what was happening. Let's turn the GoPro on again. So that's the quick capture feature. And in the preferences, you can say uh, what you would like to do with it. Either taking a photo, once you tap on that button, even when the GoPro is switched off, or if you would like to start a video. You can also lock the screen if you would like to do so. Connections, we speak about that point later on since that concerns the app in combination with your smartphone. General, here's the beat volume. Let's turn that to medium or even low. Here's the default mode once you turn your camera on. Would you like to have that GoPro immediately in video mode, looping, photo or in night mode? It's also auto power off after 15 minutes. In this case, you can also say five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes or never turn off the GoPro. LEDs all on, you have one here, you have one on the other side. Here's the video compression, you have two options here. If you would like to change the date, the time, you can do that inside that menu as well. Here's voice control as previously shown. You can also choose a different language. Maybe you would like to have the GoPro running in English, but the voice control in German, that's possible as well. Here's the touch display. Landscape lock off. I'm gonna show you what each of that does. That's up. And let's turn it down. See, then the GoPro turns 180 degrees around. If you film um, upside down, that's the correct way in doing so because later on, once you transfer the files onto your phone or your computer, they will be displayed in the correct way. In this case, I leave it up. Screensaver after one minute and the brightness after is at 37%. Regional is GPS is on, language for the moment set to English. Video format is quite important for some of you because some people are wondering why don't I get 50 or 60 frames per second? Why don't I have 25 or 30 frames? Why don't I have 120 or 100 frames? See, NTSC is used in the United States, while Paul is mainly used for the rest of the world. So if I go to Paul, I would be able to select 4K with 25 or 50 frames per second, but not 30 and 60 frames per second. If I switch that, if I revert back to NTSC, I would have the options to record my videos with 30 or 60 frames per second. These points are not so important, but reset. Here you can format the SD card and um, you can also reset the camera tips, reset defaults, or if you would like to sell your GoPro straight away, just reset it to factory reset. If you would like to see the home screen, there are always some bars displayed somewhere around your screen. See, that is on the lower side. If you swipe now from the bottom to the top, you can get rid of that screen. Here is the screen that you can usually expect to see once you turn on your camera. On the upper left side, that's the indication that there is a memory card inserted. In this case, it's a 64 gigabyte um, micro SD card. And with the current settings I'm using here, I can take up to one hour and 58 minutes of video recording. I'm in the video mode. I have 83% battery left. Here is the zoom feature. 
Down here, you can choose the preferences for your video if you would like to record your video in 4K, Full HD, or 1440 with 50, 25 frames, and so on and so on. There are some other video features that you have inside that video mode. And here are short clips. Maybe important for you if you would like to take a 15 or 30 second clip only, tap on that and you can expect to see a little bar around once you start that video. As you can see, usually you don't see any bar in any corner, but in this case, since we're taking only a 15 second clip, it will be displayed on the screen of the GoPro. And here are our 15 seconds of video recording. To turn it off, hit the X and that's it. Down here you can change the resolution and the frame rate so as the angle of the video recording. Tap on that one and as you can see usually when you start the, your camera you, would, you can expect to see a 4 to 3 format. Let's take 16 to 9 and as you can see the options that you have now are changing. So you can't take any 1080p footage as long as you're on 4 to 3. If you go to 16 to over 9, you have now the option to record your videos in 1080p, 720p, 2.7k or 4k. Let's take 4k and you can choose the frame rate of 24, 30 and 60 frames. As I told you uh, at the beginning of the video, if you would like to see 25 or 50 frames per second, what you need to do is change from NTSC to Paul. Let's take 24, go back and let's take 1080p. As you can see, if you tap on frames per second, you have more options. You can record now with 24, 30, 60, 120 and 240 frames per second. But 240 frames per second are not stabilized. If you would like to see now 4K, it gives you warning that 240 frames per second is not supported. So it reverts back to 60 frames per second. 1080p has different options than 720p, 4K on so on and so on. Let's leave it in 1080p, 60 frames per second. Low light, on the left side, you always have some a short text, automatically reduces your video frame rate in low light situations for improved image quality. Nice to know, you can either leave it in auto or switch it off. Stabilization is either turned to auto and off. My recommendation is leave it in auto. Protune is a nice feature where you can select the white balance by yourself. You can do an exposure compensation. So when your video turns to look always underexposed, you can turn it upwards so that your video looks correctly for you. You can set an ISO minimum, ISO maximum, up to ISO 6400 if you would like to do so. Let's leave it in 1600 and as you might know, the higher the ISO, the more grainy your footage gets and the less image quality you can expect. Color, either a flat profile if you do color grading in post, therefore you need extra programs, you can choose a flat profile, but for this purpose I leave it in a GoPro format. Raw audio and I have no, not connected any external microphones. Or you can also do a reset on the Protune settings. Reset and Protune off. On the lower left side is the camera symbol. If you tap on that, you also have a looping feature, which is nice. As you can see, you have kind of the same features as a normal video mode, but less features in the submenu, so 1080p with only 60 frames, 120k with 30 frames. You can also choose the field of view. You have super view, wide or linear. And here's the interval. So what looping does, set how long your camera records before looping back to record over the start of the video. That means if you select five minutes, 20 minutes or 60 minutes, 
it's basically an endless tape which, owes, which only runs for five minutes in this case. So it, it, the camera always starts taking a new video and it will override the previous scenes always within the last five minutes. As you can see on top, you have the camera symbol. Next to it are two little dots. That means you have a different menus as well. Here's the photo mode, here's the video mode, and here is the time-lapse mode. If you would like to move or if you would like to jump in between those modes with gloves, use the bottom to the right side to switch between several modes. I had to turn down the brightness a little bit because I saw that my footage tend to overexpose a little bit since the sun was already moving in the background. And let's jump to the left side, the time-lapse feature. Really nice. First of all, you have time warp video, awesome feature. Uh, you can also set, as previously shown, the uh, resolution and the format, let's leave it in 4K. Choose the angle you would like to see, but for this video you only have the wide angle. And here is the speed. You can select different speeds. And what speed mean is displayed here, time warp video speed. Speed up and stabilize your video by 10x. Tip. 5 minutes of recording creates about 30 seconds of time warp videos. If I select 15 or 30, it says tip. 5 minutes of recording creates about 10 seconds of time warp video. And how that looks like will be seen now. If you hit that little symbol on the lower left side, you can also go to time lapse video. Same settings as in video mode, but not as many. So for instance, I would like to take a 4K time-lapse video, go back, field of view. I think you only have white. Yes. And here's the interval. That means tip five minutes of recording creates about 20 seconds of a time-lapse video. If you go for five seconds, one hour of recording creates about 20 seconds of a time-lapse video. Leave it in five seconds, go back. Time-lapse photo means the camera takes individual photos and later on you have to merge them together in post using your computer. There are tons of programs which are for free. You can also do that in Adobe Lightroom. And the cool thing is, taking a photo instead of a video, you can do much more in post-processing. You can select a different frame rate, you can export the videos in different frame rates, in different resolutions. Um, later on you can choose the interval by yourself if, we, if you would like to do so. But for the camera, you can select these kind of intervals. Field of view, let me see, yeah, now you have linear and white. And if you go to five seconds, you would also be able to turn raw on. That means the entire footage has more information stored. And if you're familiar with Adobe Lightroom, you can add some image styles to your photos. Later on, export all these images, make a nice looking time-lapse video with the frame rate you would like to have. And inside that feature, you can also enable ProTune. Let's leave it off. Last but not least feature is a time, night time-lapse. If you let your GoPro taking a normal time-lapse video during the night, it will look quite grainy. But if you take a night time-lapse photo, you can select the shutter by yourself. Let's say, uh, if it's really, really dark outside, let's expose for five seconds. You can choose the interval, 10 seconds, 15, 30, up to 60 minutes. So the camera takes one photo every 60 minutes and expose it for five seconds. That's what it basically means. Later on in post, you have to put these files together 
to create a final looking time-lapse video. Field of view also linear and white, raw, on and off, whatever you need. Let's go back to 10 seconds before I forgot to do it later on myself. Go back and that is the time-lapse photo. Night time-lapse you also have the zoom feature here and on the upper left side you still have your memory card saying you can take 999 plus photos. That means with the storage I'm using here at the moment, 64 gigabyte, I probably can take up to, I have no idea, maybe like 4,000 photos or something, but the maximum that the camera is capable to display is 999. Let's jump into the photo mode very quick. Swipe from the right to the left. Here's the photo mode. As you can see, you have the same indication on the upper left side, 999 plus photos. You can select a timer. If you'd like to take a photo with your family, including you as well, place your camera somewhere, say 10 seconds, tap on the start stop button. And as you can see, a timer is running down. Four, three, two, boom. There is our photo. To turn it off, hit the X. You can zoom in, out, and the photos have a resolution of 12 megapixels. Down here you can select the field of view, white or linear. As you can see, white gives you that fish eye effect, while linear straightens all the lines. Super photo. HDR, so that gives you a high dynamic range. That's what HDR stands for. It's nice if you have a lot of sunlight and shadows on the same photo that basically gives you more dynamic range. The same as with your iPhone, you can leave it in auto or leave it off. You can also take raw photos, but bear in mind, they are a bit bigger in file size than a normal JPEG photo. Of course, you have ProTune as well. If you turn it on, Also have some features like the white balance, minimum ISO, maximum ISO for your photos. Mm, let's go to white balance to see what's going to happen. As you can see, you can select all various types of white balance. I leave it in auto and turn ProTune oops, off again because I don't need it at the moment and go back using the arrow up here. You can also select a burst, which is nice if you are doing a lot of sport. You do have the options to record 30 photos in six seconds. That's what it means. 30, 30 photos in three seconds. Or let's go down here. Five photos in one second or 10 photos in three seconds, just for demonstration purposes. So 10 photos in three seconds. That's what it basically means. Really, really simple. The maximum would be 30 photos in six seconds. That looks like that. Make sure you're using a fast writing memory card I put my favorite one in the video description below, the one that I'm also using here at the moment to record 4K 60 frames. Let's turn that off. Or auto. Go back. And the last point here, night photo. Also, you can set the shutter so it's basically the same as a night time lapse. Here you can expose for 20 seconds, 15 seconds, 5 seconds, 2 seconds, and up to 30 seconds, or you can leave it in auto. Field of view, you can also do raw recording. And if I select now, for instance, five seconds. The final footage 
will be completely overexposed because it's too bright here anyways. See, now it's taking the photo and it's exposing it for five seconds. If I'm gonna show you the photo now by swiping from the bottom to the top, That is the photo that we just took. As you can see, it's completely overexposed. You can delete this photo straight away. Delete. And here are all the photos that we previously took while I was doing this video here. On the, what you can do here, you can delete this photo, you can if it's a video, you can basically jump forward and backward, you can mark it and on the upper left side here, you can select now all the photos that you don't need or videos you don't need. It may be once your memory card is already full and you're on holiday and you don't have a different one with you. See, I'm selecting these four things now that I don't need anymore. Tap on the garbage and say delete. Now it's deleting these four files from my memory card. Go back and as you can see now you have a bar from the top to the bottom. That means once I hit that I'm now in my home screen mode again and I'm in photo mode. Let's get to the last topic. How you can connect your smartphone, in this case I'm using an iPhone 8 plus 256 gigabyte, but you can use all Android devices as well. You need to download the GoPro app for free. The, I, I will also put a link in the description below. One app that I can recommend as well, which is from GoPro, is the Splice app. In this app you can edit videos, you can cut them together, you can add some music, some text, as you need it. The connection between those two devices is absolutely for free, since the GoPro is creating its own Wi-Fi network, so you're only connected from this device to this device and vice versa. Just for later on, after you downloaded some files from your GoPro to your smartphone and you want to share them with friends, that's possible as well, but make sure you connect to a different Wi-Fi network, otherwise it doesn't work since the GoPro has no 4G. Let's get started. Swipe from the top to the bottom. Go on preferences, say Wi-Fi connections. Turn on the Wi-Fi of your GoPro. And then connect a new device, say connect, GoPro app. And now go to your GoPro app and say add camera. Now it's searching for one. We found your GoPro and connect to that camera. Bluetooth pairing request pair and here it says connection successful. Now you're connected. Now you can rename your GoPro but I'm pretty happy with that name so I say Daniel's GoPro Hero 7 Black and save new name. New camera saved. Let's go. Yes, say join. And now you can see what your GoPro sees. I can turn down the screen just a moment so you can see I'm connected now. I can still take two hours, 36 minutes of video. Here's the power on and power off button. I have my battery indication on top so you might not be able to see it later on on this video. But I was just giving you some hints that you can still see it on your phone later on. Inside the camera app, of course, you can do all kinds of settings. You can say you're now in video mode. To start a video, simply hit that button and as you can see on the GoPro, now there's a timer saying you're recording now for five, six, seven, eight, nine and so on seconds. If you hit that stop button, it stops recording a video. If you want to go into the photo mode, that's possible as well. Take a photo, 
camera busy, perfect, there's your photo. You can also go live and you can zoom in by using this little slider on the right side here. Live is pretty cool as well. You can do that for YouTube, RTMP and Facebook. Make sure you have a stable internet connection to do that. You need to log into your Facebook or YouTube account to be able to go live. Otherwise, it's really simple, like the menu from your GoPro, just swipe on the bottom to these different modes. Here's uh, the time-lapse feature. I'm taking now a time-lapse, which says camera busy. To stop that, hit the stop button and there you go. To do any kind of other time-lapse, go down here. It says time warp video, time-lapse video, time-lapse photo, night time-lapse photo, easy going. Once again, video mode. If you want to change anything in here, the resolution, that's possible as well. We're now in 1080p, shooting 25 frames per second. To review your files, let me just take another photo so you'll be able to see it. One photo here. Let me zoom in very quick. Another photo here. Go on the bottom, loading media. That's the photos we just took together. You can download them. I hope you can see it. Let me use that one down here. So download complete. View media. There is our photo that I have just downloaded. If you go to the top, there is this little arrow pointing outwards. That means, I hope you can see it now. I'm talking about this one and say save to photos. Now, first of all, I just downloaded this media onto my phone. It's possible uh, to download some videos as well. As you can see down here, I took also a couple of videos. Really easy, just download them to your, cam uh, to your phone app. And then from the phone app, you need to share it to your photo app to be able to share it with friends. Go to your photo app. There's the photo that we just took together. You can delete it from your phone. You can zoom in and out as you want. It's 12 megapixels. And you can share it straight away with your friends. But make sure to connect now to a different network because you're still connected to the Wi-Fi of your GoPro. And of course, since the GoPro does not have any internet connection, it's not possible to share it now with friends. Later on, you need to, as I said, connect to a different Wi-Fi network or 4G. Down here you can share it with via WhatsApp, Telegram, you can upload it straight away to Instagram, Dropbox. And of course you can duplicate the file and do a slideshow, whatever you want. Last point to mention is the front screen, which is always really handy if you don't have access to the display of the GoPro. As you can see, we're now in photo mode. The camera takes 12 megapixel photo in white. We already took 110 photos. With the current setting, we can take more than 999 photos. And here's our battery indication. If you would like to go now into the video mode, make sure to use the button here on this side. As you can see, looping is still active, so it will always take the last settings that we had and that was looping. I have to switch that very quick to video. And here you can see now we are in video mode. It will record now a video 1080p, 60 frames per second in wide. It starts now a timer. You can also see it with the flashing LED on top. With the current settings, we can take up to three hours, 45 minutes of video, and here's the battery. To stop that video, hit that button on top again, and it will stop recording a video. If I take now a different resolution, let's say 4K with 60 frames per second, start recording, you can see it's now taking a 4K video, 60 frames per second wide. Here's the elapsed time. And we would be able now to take just two hours and three minutes of video using exactly this resolution. 
since 4K is much bigger than 1080p and that's why we have less memory left um, after taking a 4K video. To stop that video, make sure to tap on the upper button once again and we took already now 19 clips. That's it. That was uh, the tutorial about how you can control the GoPro Hero 7 Black. The controllability, as I told you at the beginning of this video, is the same on using the GoPro Hero 5, Hero 6, Hero 7, or maybe in future the GoPro Hero 8. Thanks for watching and all the best from Frankfurt. <laughs>